Thanks for coming. Um, so there are two parts to this session. I'll explain the streamer network and Nico will explain the data unions that run on top of streamer. So there are two separate prizes, one for, all good. Uh, one for uh, using streamer, one for using the data union DAO. Um, so I'll go through what is streamer, how to use it. Uh, I'll then like talk through some ideas of what I think could be uh, great hacks, and then on to Nico for data unions. So what is uh, Streamer? So it is a decentralized peer-to-peer uh, -peer pub sub network. It means that uh, data gets streamed to any number of Ethereum accounts in real time. And the role of the network is to move data from the publishers to all the subscribers over a decentralized networking topology. So if you're familiar with PubSub channels or topics, uh, Streamer has streams and uh, they mean the same thing. And uh, it can be any number of pu publishers, any number of subscribers, uh, protocol scales based on this principle of shared responsibility where the users uh, contribute their own uh, bandwidth to, to support the, the topologies. So yeah, this is more a, a definitions uh, slide. Um, so we get asked <laughs> uh, these questions a lot. Uh, uh, it's not a blockchain, um, so it's uh, classical networking technologies, but it does have touch points in the blockchain. So it's a, an ephemeral uh, data transport, uh, but we do also have support for data resending uh, through the storage nodes that we run. Um, and note there is a liveness requirement uh, for this, so the storage nodes store the encrypted data uh, but uh, you need to have the publishers online to be able to do the key exchange. So that's one uh, small gotcha that you need to be aware of. Uh, but essentially the streamer network provides this uh, infrastructure for many to many uh, data pipelines. Our uh, access control is online, so this is one of the main touch points in the blockchain. Uh, all the data is cryptographically signed, every single data point uh, signed by the private key of the, of the user and uh, comes with end-to-end -end encryption out of the box if you choose to use it. Uh, it's also free to use as well uh, with the, the slight caveat that you just need to pay uh, a, cent to a, a cent or two of, for gas uh, to create the stream and any sort of edits on the uh, permissioning layer, the on-chain access control. So in the Web2 world, what we're replacing is this uh, centralized uh, data piece, the, the data center. So to move a lot of data around uh, in, in real time, uh, the, the pub sub model is to decouple the publishers from the subscribers using uh, you know, some beef, beefcake server in the middle that can uh, scale up and, and, and handle uh, you know, anything that comes at it. But uh, of course we know that this is centralized and we don't want to build our apps that uh, are dependent on Google Cloud, for example. So the, the streamer network looks quite different in that it it's, uh, appears more as like this, if, if the web two way was this vertical flow of data through data centers, you know, run by the Silicon Valley giants, the streamer network is, uh, the, the data flows horizontally through this overlay mesh network uh, that is made up from the users of the network, the, the users that are intrinsically interested in the data from the, from the topics or streams of the uh, network. So at this point, it's good to jump into an example. Um, so this is the streamer network uh, website. Uh, it's just like any other website, um, it loads uh, JavaScript and loads image assets from a centralized uh, point. But if you scroll down, uh, down the fold, you'll reach a data feed. And what's interesting about this data feed is that it's a stream on streamer and the data is not coming from a centralized source. It's actually coming from other visitors that are uh, on the streamer network website at the same time as you. So this is a peer-to-peer -peer data feed uh, inside the browser. So while you're visiting the uh, streamer.network website, you are becoming a light node in the system. So uh, this is the uh, network explorer uh, that, uh, so I've plugged in that stream ID and the, 
in the top left there and what it returns to me is the visual representation of what that uh, network looks like. So in one of these is the actual uh, publishing script but uh, the rest of these nodes are other visitors on the uh, visiting the streamer.network website and more likely than not this is where you are pulling the data from. Okay, so on to the access control. So um, the on-chain stream registry is on Polygon. Uh, th this is the network source of truth. Uh, so it defines who can do what on the network. Um, so on these streams, you can uh, typically publish or subscribe and the, uh, the network looks to the blockchain, looks to this registry to determine who can do what. And it also unlocks some interesting uh, smart contract access control policies. Um, so it, this piece, this module, uh, if you're familiar with the LIT protocol, uh, it's quite similar. Uh, we rolled our own permissioning system for the network, but perhaps it could be composable with LIT as well. So this is an open question. Maybe it gets answered in the uh, uh, hackathon this weekend. So uh, here is the like a, a different view of the access control, uh, fine-grained uh, permissions, publish, subscribe, changing permissions, edit and delete and whatnot. And yeah, like I mentioned, you can, you can start to get a bit creative with these access controls. So you could have a token-gated uh, PubSub uh, channel. Uh, perhaps there's a stake to PubSub, um, different kind of uh, primitives that you can uh, bake in to the access control and on our marketplace that uh, Nico will, will, will speak to more, uh, we have time-based pay-to-access uh, subscriptions. So this also composes to the access control, you pay tokens to uh, get a time-based uh, access or subscription access to a certain stream. So getting into the tooling now, so the streamer client is your uh, best friend to, to make all of this work. So it's designed to be this wrapper that interfaces with the uh, on-chain stream registry and the network and it bundles in the light node as well. So it really kind of uh, takes care of you from all different angles. Uh, so you will need uh, a little bit of Matic to interact with the stream registry and we're happy to sponsor this of course. So just uh, reach out to us if you need. Uh, any Matic, uh, and it's just an NPM package. So it's uh, uh, these uh, the streamer client runs in the browser as well as any sort of Node.js environment. Uh, also, a shout out to the examples repo has a bunch of uh, code samples to learn from as well. So uh, if you're stuck, uh, head there. And we also have, we also make it really easy as well. So we can uh, also create a stream using a, a user interface. So just using MetaMask or whatever wallet uh, that you have available, you don't even need to touch code to be able to create streams and uh, edit the access control. So it's a nice way to get started, I think. So this is what's called the core app. You, know, you can uh, visit it at streamer.network forward slash core. And it's, yeah, super easy. So this is the stream ID that I'm configuring here. So the ID is made up of the, um, the Ethereum account that creates the stream plus some path name. And this can also be your ENS name. It will kind of um, uh, scoop this up from the ENS registry. And in the share settings sidebar, you can uh, edit the access control uh, but uh, you can do all of this within the streamer client as well. And we have docs, yay. And uh, so the, the client is a uh, JavaScript implementation. So if you are building uh, or integrating with a different language, uh, there is a solution for you here. Uh, we have what's called broker nodes. So this is, uh, you would need to run a, a broker node and open up its interfaces. So it has three interfaces, interfaces, uh, WebSockets, HTTP and MQTT. And just about every single language uh, ever written has these sorts of uh, 
libraries built into them. So you can publish and subscribe, push and pull into the network using these interfaces if you run a broker node. So this is an option if you want to uh, work with a different language for the most part. Um, so we have this kind of uh, gateway into the network if JavaScript is in your thing. Uh, so what can be built uh, with the with the network? One of the most native and most interesting use cases, I think, is uh, like a decentralized group wallet chat. So this is using the network for uh, decentralized uh, real-time communications between Ethereum, Ethereum identity wallets. So a chat room is just a stream, and the participants in this chat room uh, have published and subscribe uh, permissions to uh, write messages. These messages are uh, being signed, so you absolutely have uh, full proof that they, you are talking to who you are talking to, and there are no servers here. So um, you know if you if you don't count where the where the JavaScript came from from the uh, single page application, this is a totally serverless uh, experience. So um, yeah, extensions to this. Uh, creating token-gated chat rooms, et cetera, et cetera, token-gated experiences. This is quite a <clears throat> quite a powerful uh, primitive to, to build on. Okay, so very long list. Does it? Yeah, it, it all fits in, luckily. Um, so, so what what should you build with Streamer? Um, the I think you know. Obviously, your creativity should should guide you. But here are some some concepts that uh, often come up as as useful. So, like I'm, I think I talked to the access control policies for streams. You can you can do a lot there. Uh, decentralized metrics gathering and uh, Web three open data sharing. So this is about collecting fine grained metrics from other decentralized systems and uh, using the network to uh, interconnect and and kind of uh, improve on decentralized systems without having to reach for centralized um, solutions to be able to to monitor the health of of the network in real time. So I think this is quite a, a rich uh, use case, and it can be stacked with uh, many other networks that are also sponsors here today. Uh, wallet to wallet communications. Uh, I showed you the uh, chat app. So this is. This is what it is, uh, essentially. Uh, Off-chain multi-sig uh, chat and conviction voting. So imagine the chat app, but with your multi-sig participants from Gnosis, say, for example, you can build conviction over what to vote on and, and, and so on in this off-chain experience. Uh, group chat plus lens protocol. I think this would be fantastic. Protocol stack interconnection. So if you have IPFS and it needs to talk with uh, live peer or whatever, then you could use uh, Streamer as this middleware to have this decentralized communication between your your stack. Now uh, we have decentralized wireless network proof of coverage. So this is a, a bit of a uh, a long shot for a hackathon, but uh, something to think about if you if you can uh, create kind of a coverage map for decentralized wireless uh, networks, then um, yeah, it can feed into the proof of coverage algorithm. So this is fantastic. Uh, first mile data transport for uh, from data providers to oracles. So this is um, from the provider uh, up until the oracle. The streamer network is a great technology uh, solution for this. Uh, Redstone is is one of the the kind of next generation oracles that are using us in this way. Uh, multiplayer gaming, real time state share. Uh, I think that's one's quite clear. And RPC load balancing, which is not clear. So I will uh, speak briefly to this one. So this is kind of uh, just an internal idea that we have uh, to scale uh, the RPC. Uh, centralized point in many blockchains. Uh, so yeah, typically if you have this uh, very popular DAP and they're polling the RPC, it's quite a heavy load uh, for the RPC. 10,000 users, 10,000 requests a second if it's uh, fast polling, for example. So that's not great. Um, what we can offer is uh, to use the streamer network to 
uh, sort of load balance these uh, RPC calls. So how this would work is you would have these kind of watcher nodes that would do the RPC request as many as you want for as much decentralization as you want. Uh, but then your dApps would be uh, interconnected and kind of uh, pulling in the data that originally came from that RPC load, uh, sorry, that RPC endpoint, they would be um, getting it from each other. So this is where the shared responsibility of the streamer protocol comes in. It's kind of similar to what we uh, showed with the streamer.network website where uh, you're getting the data from your visitors. So in this way, we take all the pressure off that RPC endpoint and you can kind of start to imagine other sort of use cases where there is this central uh, point uh, or central data uh, publisher that can get overloaded. So if you have this system where you sort of um, protect it with this, with the streamer network, where the messages are coming from the other participants, it becomes quite a uh, an easy scale uh, solution. So yeah, this is something to think about. Okay, um, moving moving on to data unions, and uh, Nico will take over. Awesome. Let's see if I can get this thing a bit down because I'm not as tall as you are. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Uh, hi guys, I'm Nico. Um, I'm the Dev Engineer for Data Union DAO. And Matthew just told you how you can um, handle all the data stuff, and I'm going to now tell you how you can actually monetize this data. So let's jump in. So first of all, how you monetize this data, you monetize it with a data union. Um, uh, what is a data union? Um, it's an organization with an application where individuals participate in the creation of valuable data. So what, that, what does that mean? It means um, members generate data through data unions application, um, which crowdsources data. And uh, in the streamer context, this data can then get sold on the, on the streamer marketplace. And I'll talk about that more um, in a minute um, about the marketplace. And with a data union, you can essentially um, monetize uh, your data streams. So with the data, the data union DAO offers um, the data union framework, and this contains um, a smart contract template that handles payment um, distribution for the data union, and uh, a TypeScript-based SDK uh, that handles all the interaction with, uh, with the data union or with the smart contract. And this SDK is an uh, NPM package, and I will talk about that more in a, in a minute. Uh, and we also offer server architecture for your member management. So let's see how this payment distribution works. So you can see here, wait, do you see if I move my mouse? No, okay. Well, you see this uh, center contract there. And as I said, it is a, a smart contract. Um, and essentially, money gets or token gets sent into that contract and then distributed into, uh, to the different members. Um, I'm just gonna talk you through how this kind of works. So you've got an admin and that's gonna be your project, right? So you have an Ethereum address that publishes or deploys that contract and that's gonna be the automatic um, admin. And this admin can then add members. So you, essentially the data publishes, right? And um, then the admin can set a admin fee, which uh, will result in this, uh, I don't know if you can see, the 30%, for example. Um, and you can configure that in the way you want, really. Um, and then if token gets sent into that contract, the admin, for example, gets 30%, uh, and your data union members will share the 69% um, of those uh, incoming tokens. 69 because 1% uh, of that, um, of the 100%, go to the data union DAO, and we use this 1% for uh, funding new projects, you know, going to hackathon and those kind of things. Um, yeah, and once a token gets sent to the smart contract, so that could, for example, happen on a marketplace, right? So uh, your data get, your, someone pays to be able to subscribe to your stream, and uh, those tokens then get sent to that smart contract, and then again, uh, your members are able to withdraw uh, their token. Or they can just accumulate it over time and uh, take them out whenever they want, really. Um, 
Right. This happens, uh, so we have the smart contract and we have the SDK. And the SDK enables that you to interact very easily with the contract. Um, as I said, it's just an NPM package and you can really just, you know, it's, a, it's really those few lines of code. We have more interaction with the contract with this, uh, the essential lines. Um, you, deploy, you can deploy the data union with the SDK. You can set the admin fee. You can um, add members, remove members, and also withdraw um, your tokens from there. Um, alternatively, you can also use um, the streamer core. Uh, Matthew briefly talked about this. Um, and it's, it's essentially a front end where you can uh, deploy the data union. And it's got a nice uh, interface where you can add the name, um, your admin fee, and, and like and even your streams that you want to um, monetize. Um, right. And then about the marketplace, you can then publish this data union onto the streamer marketplace. So they're like different uh, data products where all the streams are sent um, on the marketplace. And then P uh, data buyer can subscribe to those uh, streams for um, token. Like they will pay for it. Uh, by the way, those tokens don't have to be the streamer data token. They can actually be your own uh, custom token. Um, right. We also have documentation. Um, there will be a, a little bit of a guide how you can actually deploy a data union. Um, one way is with streamer, and the other way is just programmatically with the SDK. Um, yeah, an example would be, for example, for data union is um, Swash. So Swash is a browser extension. It's very easy. So you just uh, install your um, Swash um, plugin into your Chrome browser, um, join that data union, and then you can share your browser data and earn by sharing your browser data. So it's actually quite clever. Um, and then if you're looking, if you're still looking for an idea what to build, uh, Amra, our community manager, he uh, did a great blog about uh, some ideas that you can build um, at this hackathon, so feel free to go to this link and uh, check it out. I highly, highly recommend. And um, yeah, we're giving out $10,000 uh, in prices, so one track is building with Streamer, and the other track is building um, with Data Union. Um, so I really, really recommend uh, integrating this into your project. Um, and. Yeah, I think it works very well together, Stream and Data Union anyway. Um, and if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to us um, on Telegram. Uh, you can also join the Discord server of uh, Data Union or of Streamer, and we'll be present there too. And of course, uh, the one of, um, of EVE Global as well. Uh, cool, All right. Do you, want any, do you want to add anything? OK. So if you've got if you guys have got any questions, we're here to answer. <laughs> cool. Uh, no, we don't. No, not in the moment. We can we can we can uh, we sponsor we sponsor the transaction fee to actually uh, deploy the contract uh, and 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 the stream uh, yeah. Um, ideally, you do it. So, if you build with Streamer, I would recommend um, doing it um, on the front end and then. You will you will see like how how you can um, add the payment and and how much it costs and, and all that kind of stuff and then publish it to the marketplace. Uh, so this is this is kind of like the cutting edge of uh, what we have uh, out of the box on the access control. So uh, we do have, it's basically in PR at the moment for a uh, very complete code example that is on the uh, on the chat. Um, 
on the chat uh, repo. So you will need to kind of uh, <laughs> dig, dig there. And we have like the contracts that do talk to the access control there. Uh, but this is like very, uh, well, I'll, I'll just say it's not documented at all. Like this, this token gating uh, kind of uh, twist to the access control, it's not, it's not like uh, the, the core functionality of, of the network. So I guess we, we have some catching up to do on that documentation, but um, uh, we have uh, accomplished kind of feature completeness on the chat app that I showed and it's, that's open source. And uh, so there's a few caveats here that um, the, the, the chat app um, token gating is just for ERC20 tokens on the Polygon chain um, and there's a PR out there for NFT uh, token gating. So it's, yeah, it's very fresh and very uh, hackable to, to kind of, yeah, build, build this in, uh, but it's, it's not quite as easy as like just uh, taking Lego blocks at the moment. So uh, we have the examples there, but it's, um, it's quite cutting edge. Uh, I, I think it's too hardcore for me. <laughs> I think the access control, uh, you would need to move to, to, to Mumbai as well. So if you, if you're super brave, yeah, don't recommend, <laughs> but, uh, we can sponsor the transactions. It, yeah. it only costs a cent to, to, um, to do these things. So. Yeah, very happy to support that. And we will have uh, full uh, native sponsoring of of all transactions on streamer. It's, it, it's just not ready uh, this weekend, so yeah. Uh, any other uh, questions? Okay, well, thanks for uh, staying up so late. And uh, yeah, really appreciate it. And uh, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks. Cool.